Hi, I'm Stuart from Warwickshire Wild Game. We are back out with Ollie Lees tonight uh, on the foxes. Um, we've still got poults not going up to roost, um, still jogging on the floor. So we're making a real effort at the minute to make sure we've got no foxes around the pens. Um, I've got my friend with me tonight, Jono. We're gonna split up so we can cover a bit more ground. Jono um, is using for his spotting, uh, he's using a thermal, he's using the Hick Micro Falcon FQ50. Um, and he's just, uh, he's just ordered the Hick thermal scope, um, but it's not gonna be here for a week. So he has got a PARD DS35 night vision scope uh, to tide him over until his new thermal scope comes. I am using my normal setup, so uh, Pulsar Helion Pro 2 XP50 for my spotting and my Pulsar Thermion XQ50 uh, on, my, on my rifle, on my 308. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna split up from here. Uh, John is gonna go and look over uh, one pen with some mown grass next to it and uh, me and Ollie are gonna go and look over some stubbles backing onto one of our pens. Um, so yeah, we'll head out and see how we get on. We'll, uh, we'll quietly get out and get set up and try and squeak him in. That was a bit of a, an orthodox shooting position. So we're set up looking over this stubble. Um, you see which way the truck's facing, looking this way onto this bank, um, knowing that there's foxes coming out of this cover. 
um, saw one right up on the hill, right up on the skyline, so we called it down, shot it sort of 80 yards in front of us here. Because we're calling, there's a, a little sort of indent in this field behind us. And because uh, I've been squeaking this one in, just thought I'd have a quick look behind me, and sure enough, there's a fox coming out of the cover behind us. Um, so I've let it come round. Um, I wasn't sure of the distance when we pulled up. I ranged, I used my binos to range find everything here so I don't have to then worry about distances. I'm, you know, I've got it in the back of my mind. So I had to get back in the truck, find the binos, range the nearest hedge to it to give me an idea of a distance, um, which took a bit longer than I liked, but uh, good result, dead fox. Um, so it's getting cramp in my calf halfway through because I've got, I'm stood in the, on the door sill with my left foot and my right foot's on the back of the tyre. So um, yeah, I think it's probably the first time I've shot a fox like this, but it, it works, so I'm happy. Right, we'll um, go and look over another bit of stubble, I think. So that is us done for this evening. Um, finished up with three. So me and Ollie went off and uh, shot two over the stubbles. Jono sat uh, for the evening look, overlooking the mown grass and um, didn't come up with anything. It was there for a couple of hours. No, no sign of any foxes. Um, so as we called it a night, we just come to meet up here. Uh, have a chat before we we head home and um, as we were chatting Jono was just still scanning with his hick and uh, he spotted um, this third fox up on the bank here so um, Jono shot the third one good night really still see, saw a few more um, too far away and with good strong wind tonight so we couldn't call them in um, but they'll be there for another night uh, thanks very much for watching guys So this is the Series 2 Panther, the PQ50L. This is a very nice little compact thermal scope. And as you can see, there's a internal 18650 battery just in here. A really nice feature about the Panther is it's also got a built-in laser rangefinder, which is this little bit on the top here. And turning the unit round, or turning the rifle round, I should say, you can see the button set up on this side. Like most HIC Micro products, the Panther is particularly easy to use. You've just got three buttons on the side here. The first one is your power button, which also has a standby mode, so it comes on instantly. You've got a laser rangefinder button, which will ping your uh, laser rangefinder and display it um, on the screen within the scope. It's also got a scan function so you can just keep it continuously going for a set amount of time. Then you've got a, uh, a dial with a centre push here which is your, um, your menu button. So a short press on that will bring up the brightness and contrast, those basic kind of um, scope features and then a long press brings up the main menu which you then scroll through and push the center button again to select the item you want to uh, you want to go to 
There's also inbuilt recording with this and a Wi-Fi feature so you can stream it direct to a mobile phone or tablet using the Hick Micro app. Um, you can record video and stills directly to an inbuilt memory. To record footage, you press and hold the laser rangefinder button and the center of the menu button and that stops and starts the recording. A short press of the jog dial here will swap you between your colour palettes. You've got four colour palettes, your uh, black hot, white hot, red hot and fusion. And rotating the jog dial when it's not in the menu system will do your, uh, your zoom, your magnification in and out. And again, you've got the picture in picture mode with the scope too. This unit's really easy to zero. I zeroed this yesterday in about four shots. Um, basically what I did with that was I uh, initially I had another thermal scope on this rifle so I just set the rifle up with the scope aimed at a certain point and then very carefully removed that scope put that one on and uh, adjusted it to the same point of impact and uh, then took it out in the field to confirm that zero so what I did was uh, I took a target put that out uh, at 50 meters which was just a steel target and I could see that perfectly well through this scope even in daylight and um, I was a little bit high with the first shot so I adjusted that down got it smack on at 50 with two shots and then I took it out to 100 meters and fired another shot which was again a couple of inches high so uh, I just adjusted that down and the last shot was smack bang where it wanted to be and that's all using the freeze frame feature on this scope which I know a lot of other um, scopes have got but this one and the menu system for the zeroing I actually found is probably one of the most simplest uh, zeroing procedures that I've done with a thermal scope. Mounting the Panther is also very easy. One piece mount there which just bolts onto the bottom of the scope and then it's got two locking bolts to attach it direct to a Picatinny rail. I've got to say that I was very impressed with the picture quality of this scope. It is a nice little unit. It's got a 2,500 metre detection range. Obviously that's on a man size target, but even so for foxing, uh, longer range foxing as well, perfectly adequate scope. You've got a good range of magnification there from one times, two times, four times and eight times. You've also got a selection of five different reticle options in three different colours. And as I say, all this is powered by a single 18650 battery, it comes with two, each one gives you around about six hours use. Now I took this setup out last night to see if I could find a fox with my mate Gary. So we spent a fair bit of time walking around the farm looking for a fox and uh, to be honest all we found initially were a lot of deer. We uh, First off we bumped into a roe deer with a couple of young and uh, we spent a little bit of time watching her then moved in a little bit closer just so we could get some some nice footage of her then we moved on a little bit further into one of the next fields and again we found a few more fallow deer in fact we found fallow deer in pretty much every field that we went into and in quite substantial numbers we did eventually find a fox and uh, I tried to squeak him in because he was around about 150 yards away but he was um, he was in some quite tall grass and I wanted to get him in for a, a, a good sort of clear shot and also to get some, some sort of better footage of him as well. So I tried giving him a squeak but he didn't want to know and uh, he quickly just sort of disappeared off into the next field. After a little bit more wandering around, we bumped into uh, one of the roe deer yet again. This one came through the hedge in front of us and was probably stood about 20 or 30 yards in front of us uh, for a little while before going out across the field. After much traipsing around, we finally bump into a fox. This fox was around about 120 metres, 130 metres, somewhere about that, up the top of the field, just nosing around. So Gary gave it a, uh, a bit of a squeak and it turned and looked and eventually came bounding down the field towards us. So it was a little bit tricky to, to shoot where we were. We, we didn't have all that many safe angles, so we had to wait for it to come in very close to get a clear shot. Eventually it came right into around about 30 yards and um, it just made a very straightforward shot. So not really much of a test for the scope or the rifle. However, you can see that you wouldn't have any bother at all shooting a fox at 150 meters or so. Um, 
in fact I would probably say with that sort of set up shooting bang on and uh, zooming it right in the magnification there's no reason why you wouldn't be able to take a Fox 2 300 meters with that I'm sure so all in all a really nice little unit very very sharp and um, just very straightforward to use which is probably I think what I like most about this scope is it really is very very straightforward to use so if you're looking for a good quality good image and something that's straightforward and easy to use and a nice compact package the Panther could well be the way to go. If you aren't a member of Basque it's time to join now. Basque looking after your sport looking after you.